this is a sequel video to introduction to division of polynomials you need to watch that video before you tackle this question because it's very important i discussed and treated how to divide polynomials how to do the division of polynomials so i'll be applying that principle here so i would want you to go over that video it's a very short video and once you are done you will be equipped for this one so for this we need to find the complex factors of this equation but remember that we have some missing terms here and I will actually write them when I'm doing the calculation just to explain there is no need but I'll use it to do the explanation in the previous video I was saying that we cannot use quadratic formula to solve this we need to break it down to a square power and to be able to do that we need a divisor to do the division to break this down and to do to get that divisor we are supposed to look for what we call a common factor a common factor means that what value of x minus 8 will give us 0 once we are able to get that value that is what we call the common factor then it is a factor of this it is part of the root after we finish this calculation and we need to do that by inspection so usually these are simple values that we can find easily so there is no need for us to do a long calculation to find this value so i'll just use the calculator to locate the value i already know the value but usually you can do try and error to see what will be the value so let's check which value of x minus 8 will give us 0 let's start with 0 the result is 8 so you can also try 1 the result is 7 even if you try negative 1 the result will be 9 so let's try 2 now we are getting 0 so you can see you already know so once you know that 2 will make it 0 there is no need for you to do the try and error so we have 2 now 2 here means 2 is what a common factor it means after you finish the calculation for this work 2 will be part of the root. So now we will use the 2 as our divisor. And how do we do that? When x is equal to 2, we can find the divisor. When x is equal to 2, then we just carry this one here and equate the function to 0. So we have x minus 2 is equal to 0. So x minus 2 is our divisor. So we will use x minus 2 to do the division. So this becomes our divisor. This becomes our dividend. So now let's do that. To do the long division, I hope you have watched the other video I was talking about. To do the long division, we bring the divisor out, x minus 2, and then we substitute the dividend inside the box. So I will write the missing term so that I don't confuse you. Here I have x cubed, let's say plus 0x squared plus 0x minus 8. So these are the missing terms that we have here. 1, 2. There is no need for you to write it, but because of the calculation, I would want to do it so that you understand what I am working on. Now, your first step is we are about to take every term one by one and divide it by what? x. The constant is not part. So we pick x, we divide it by what? x cube so we have x cube over x now when i break this down i'm left with x square you write the x square here at the top here use x square to multiply the divisor so x square times x is giving us x cube then x square times negative 2 is giving us minus 2 x square now we are subtracting all this result from our dividend so put this into bracket bring your subtraction sign here and underline here now negative times x will give us negative x cube add the result to this one to do the subtraction when we add we are getting zero i won't write that one then i'm done Negative times this will give us positive 2x squared. Add it to 0x squared and the x squared term because they are the same. The result will still be what? 2x 
square. Now, there is another term here, 0x minus 8. Remember that we do not have any other term for x, so we are done for this one. We start the calculation all over again, so we add 0x minus 8 to this one. So, plus 0x minus 8. Now, we start all over again. Pick x, use it to divide this one. So, we have 2x squared dividing x. This will take care of this. We are left with 2x. Now, write the 2x here. So, we have plus 2x. 2x times x will give us 2x squared. 2x times 2 will give us minus 4x. Underline this one. Subtract the result from the dividend we have here. So now, negative times this is giving us minus 2x squared. Add it to this term, we have 0. I will not write that. So I'm moving on to the next. Negative times this is giving us plus 4x. Add it to this term, it will still give you 4x. So I'll write my 4x. Now, there is no term here which is a constant for me to work with this. So I'm done for this step. I'll just bring my negative 8 here. This is what I have. Now, I need to start all over again. 4x divided by x, the result is 4. So I'll go here, plus 4. 4 times x will give me what? 4x. 4 times 2 is giving me minus what? 8. Put this into bracket, underline it, and subtract. Negative times this, minus 4x. When you add it to this, you are getting 0. This times this will give me 8. 8 plus this, we are getting 0. So the remainder is what? 0. So now, this is called the quotient. We have our quotient and our remainder to be what? 0. So all you need to do is, dividend should be equal to quotient times divisor plus remainder. So that is what I'm about to write. Dividend equals, I've just removed the missing terms, the 0, 0, those terms. So x cubed minus 8 equal to the quotient times the divisor plus the remainder. Remember that it is not always that the remainder will be what? 0. It's because of this example. That is why we are getting this. Now, if I equate whatever result I have here to 0, I should be able to find the root of the equation. But watch carefully. I have x minus 2 here. When I equate it to 0, I can find the value of what? x. But when I equate x squared plus 2x plus 4 to 0, I have to solve this again to find its root because x squared 10 means the root will be 2 and it will be a complex root. So for that reason, we need to apply the quadratic formula here for only the quotient and find its root. Then we add it to this one to generate the root of x cubed minus what? 8. So now our focus is here. Let's find the root of this one. So we can compare this with ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Now we have a equals, the coefficient here is 1, b equals 2, and c equals 4. So we can now use the quadratic formula. So from here, let's substitute the value of a, b, and c. So we have minus 2, which is b, plus or minus root of 2 squared minus 4, a is 1, c is 4, all over 2 into 1. So we have x equals minus 2 plus or minus root of, this will give us 4, this time this minus 16, all out of 2. So when we continue, we have x equals minus 2 plus or minus root of minus 12 all out of 2. Now we learned that this will give us minus 2 plus or minus root of 12 times root of what? Neg 1. Just for the sake of those of us who are still having issues, we divide this by what? 2. But note that root of neg 1 
is the same as what? I, the complex unit. Now, punch root of 12 on your calculator. We have x equals minus 2 plus or minus 2 root 3. So when you punch this, you have 2 root 3 times I, which is this, all divided by what? 2. Now we can break this down by saying x equals minus 2 over 2 plus or minus 2 root 3i all over 2. This will take care of this. This will take care of this. So we have x equals minus 1 plus or minus root 3i. So now this is our root. One is positive, one is negative. But don't forget that we also have a root here, x minus 2, which is our common factor in the beginning. We got 2. x is equal to what? 2. So it is part of the calculation. So we have x is equal to 2. x is equal to negative 1 plus i root 3. And then x is equal to negative 1 minus i root 3 so these are our roots the roots are actually three let me name it x1 x2 x3 so now this is what we have so the roots of x cubed minus 8 are the values we have here 2 minus 1 plus i root 3 minus 1 minus i root root 3 and this is our result